So hello uh, and welcome everyone to today's webinar on Blueback Seismic Reservoir Characterization. My name is Mark O'Brien uh, from Blueback, I'll be your host, thank you for your participation. Just a quick note on today's session, uh, we're using a GoToMeeting hosted presentation. You should see a panel uh, like this. You can open and close the panel by clicking on this arrow. Um, you can uh, display the GoToMeeting session as a full screen or window via the view menu. By default everyone is muted so please submit any questions you have into this text dialog uh, and we'll do our best to answer you. We'll hopefully share some of the questions and answers that, answers that have come in at the end of the session. This webinar has also been recorded, you'll all be provided a link within 24 hours. Please feel free to distribute as you require. Uh, finally the uh, recording will also be on our website. So moving on to the agenda, um, I'll give a brief introduction to Blueback Seismic Reservoir Characterization and the Seismic NetPay or SMP workflow. There's a couple of slides to introduce each of the SMP workflow components. I'll talk briefly on how the Blueback SRC differentiates itself uh, from other products in the market. I'll then show Blueback SRC and the SMP workflow using the uh, recently released Toolbox version 12 and a synthetic data set. Um, I'll talk uh, about the licensing and then finally um, review some of the Q&A that have come in. So Blueback Seismic Reservoir Characterization delivers high-end geophysics tools to assist reservoir characterization. The new Blueback SRC is basically split into two groups of tools which cover the seismic net pay workflow and in addition to this uh, are a set of complementary tools for AVO classification, calculating connected volume uh, and petrophysical reflectivities. The seismic net pay workflow is a simple and robust method used for net pay estimation from seismic data. The workflow was first used by BP with great success in the North Sea and other regions and was initially published in the early 2000s and has since become a proven technology. The workflow is applicable for thin seismically isolated sand reservoirs uh, and multiple stacked reservoirs for example. The Blueback Reservoir software development team have brought together all of the tools required for net pay estimation into a single suite of tools contained within the Blueback uh, uh, SRC. In addition to native patrol functionality, the inclusion of rock physics, inversion and pick zero crossings will allow the user to run a complete seismic net pay workflow within the familiarity of the patrol user interface. The SMP workflow uh, takes into account any tuning effects which may alter the apparent reservoir thickness and is comprised of three key building blocks. Extended elastic, extended elastic impedance which comprises a tool for EEI angle analysis on your well data this involves plotting acoustic impedance and gradient impedance and well data on a log-log plot and finding the angle of projection which gives the maximum separation between pay and non-pay fasces. Coloured inversion uses the seismic spectra of the EEI reflectivity volume and the earth spectra of, of the EEI logs to find and operate it to colour the seismic data to create a band limited impedance volume. And the final step, seismic net pay analysis. This allows for detuning the band limited impedance volume calibrating the scaling uh, by tying to well data or seismic data and finally calculating net pay by multiplying by the apparent thickness isopack. So what's new? Uh, there's nothing particularly new about in each step in the workflow. The functionality is well known and different aspects are available in other software packages. However, some of the steps can be labor intensive, requiring the user to push results from one step to the next, often between applications, making it unrealistic to execute many iterations of the workflow. So with the new Blueback SRC, um, all of the steps are available in one package and importantly, each step can be linked to the next in a continuous process, allowing the whole workflow to be run as one task via the Patrol Workflow Manager. This allows variables to be created to control the key parameters, uh, which can be placed in loops. Um, the workflow-enabled SMP allows for easy repetition of the process. Uh, input parameters to be adjusted to quickly see the consequences, for example, how do the coloured inversion operator filters and taper, tapers effect volumes and all processes can be run in loops allowing one to be able to plot total net pay against a range of chi angles for example. So I think I agree a very powerful addition to this technology. Um, so having said that let's jump into a demo and look at the tool um, in action. So we've generated a, um, a synthetic data set for the purpose of this demo which actually comes uh, with an associated um, white paper entitled um, Parameter Sensitivity in Seismic Net Pay Workflow, uh, which illustrates the relative importance um, of the controlling factors in estimating seismic net pay from colour inverted band limited impedance data. So both this paper and this data set and the associated workflows 
um, are available to you, uh, please contact us. So onto the data, um, we have a simple um, dome uh, top reservoir surface, um, and the base reservoir it has a, an undulating um, surface. The well logs that have been generated have lower VP and VS in the non-reservoir -reser sections, um, and the reservoir is composed of a high velocity sand and an intermediate velocity shale layer to make the seismic net to gross uh, less than 100% in places. Um, a Butterworth wavelet has been used to generate angle stacks from um, 0 to 40 degrees. So we've opened up the toolbox, which I can do directly from the, this new icon in the, the toolbar now. So quickly you'll see this is the um, new uh, toolbox 12 uh, interface, which has been slightly updated. Um, so we have individual icons for each tool. We also have additional um, searching and filtering functionality. Um, so I'm just going to filter on my on the seismic reservoir characterization category. So first in the list is the seismic net pay um, workflow. So this is a graphical representation of uh, the workflow. Um, there's also a text description of the methodology. Um, it lists the uh, additional tools available. And finally, all of the um, references that this work is based upon uh, are listed. So we're going to run through the workflow, uh, the, the net pay workflow, which kind of runs through, um, down this diagonal here. Um, so the first job is to calculate your intercept and gradient volumes. So this is nothing new. Uh, you may indeed already have these from your seismic processing center, for example. It's just a straightforward dialog to add in your um, angle stacks. Um, assign an angle. Um, so if three or more stacks are available as input, um, two different calculation options are available here. Um, we have all the addition, usual um, tooltip help, uh, which uh, are available here when you hover over uh, certain icons and uh, dialog. Uh, and we have all the associated usual documentation that comes with uh, the software. So you just add in your angle stacks, click OK. Um, I'm just going to uh, jump into a window, another window. OK, so here we have the um, angle stacks for 0, 10, 20 degrees uh, displayed on the top row as wiggles. Uh, there's a little bit of gain in amplitude uh, from 0 to 10 to 20, but not much move out. Uh, but please just remember this is a, a synthetic data set that we've generated. So for each trace and reflector, the peaks and troughs um, are plotted against 2 sine theta, which is the angle of incidence, and from that the intercept and gradient um, calculated. Uh, so we can see the intercept, gradient, uh, intercept volume here and the gradient volume uh, in this window. So the next tool um, in the SMP workflow is the EEI angle analysis. So we're going to run the EEI angle analysis on our hard well data and then apply that to the broader seismic data. So in this dialog we're going to select to um, choose which wells we want to use as input, select our VP, our VS and our, our row log from the dropdowns. Um, we're going to calculate um, acoustic impedance, gradient impedance, plot them in this log-log space and colour by fascies. So I'm just going to click to update the plot. So we can see the grey points, um, uh, which are the non-reservoir shales, uh, the yellow points are the reservoir sands, uh, and in this demo data set the reservoir has been filled with hydrocarbon so you'll notice all the, the sands plot in one place. Um, AI and GI are calculated according to um, these equations which are uh, given in the dialog underneath. So now we're going to use this um, interactive chi angle slider to find the chi angle that gives us the best uh, separation between fascias. So if you move around, so we've come down to sort of minus 50, 6 degrees, uh, we can't see any separation in this histogram. Or we can push this forwards to say um, 42 degrees. Uh, which is giving us a very good separation. Um, so there are various tools for how you might want to display. You can display as lines or stacked bars, individual bars, uh, play around with the number of bins, for example. Okay. 
So um, obviously this is a synthetic data set uh, and there's probably a greater amount of separation between the fascias than one would see in the real world for example. So we're going to carry this um, angle uh, 42 degrees forwards. We're going to create an EEI e e log at 42 degrees as well as AI geo logs. You apply a suffix and just click um, apply. So moving on. So we've now found our optimal EEI angle for fascist separation at the world log level. Um, we need to now apply it to our seismic volumes. So this tool turns intercept and gradient uh, seismic data, either reflectivities or colour inverted relative impedances, into an EEI attribute at specified chi angle. Um, so I'm just waiting for the inline and cross line to be available here. So the EEI uh, data calculated here is naturally going to have different amplitudes at different chi angles. Uh, as gradient amplitudes are typically larger than um, intercept amplitudes, we've added an option here to normalize the results so that the RMS averages of the results uh, are the same as the intercept volume. Okay, so I have my inline and cross line available now. I'll just click to update and um, zoom in here. And then I'm going to zoom in on this one. And then I'm just going to do a little juggle of windows. Just bear with me while I get this set up. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do now um, is to plot points from the selected uh, inline cross line and surface uh, onto the EEI um, attribute volume. Uh, so this projection line is controlled by the um, interactive slider uh, and data as projected down this line uh, is displayed in the histogram underneath. So you can see that 132 degrees, uh, there's no separation um, in this histogram, everything is plotting in uh, one big uh, lump. So we can use the interactive chi angle slider to uh, update the EEI attribute and surface um, on the fly. So we've just updated to um, 42 degrees. So this is both going to update the histogram based on the new projection and also update the virtual volume and surface displayed here on the right which you just saw happen there. Um, so we've used the well data to choose this chi angle, however you can use these dynamic um, updates based on the slider here to play around, uh, look at the volume and the surface and see if you can see any sort of features start to stand out at certain chi angles. Um, so certain chi angles are going to optimise fluids in your seismic for example, so you might start to see them standing out as um, horizontal features. Uh, certain chi angles may also pick out lithology on your surface so you may start to see channels or deltas standing out. Um, so you can also see at chi angle uh, 42 on the histogram uh, underneath uh, we can start to see the um, same separation of uh, data we saw before so we can start to see the, uh, the hydrocarbons plotting away from the um, background shales. So this process is using a uh, simple equation to make the new volume where the reflectivity is equal to i times uh, cos chi plus g times sine chi. So now we have our um, EEI volume at 42 degrees, we can take this volume forwards uh, into the next process which is coloured inversion operator design. So we've generated our um, reflectivity volume in the previous step which we can now colour invert to make a band limited impedance volume. Uh, the aim of this is to shape the frequency content of the seismic data uh, to make it look like the frequency content of the well data by colouring the frequencies. So to do that we need to analyse um, the frequency of our well data. So we select our wells, and we select our acoustic impedance log, and we just click to recalculate. So we're now looking at a log frequency uh, versus log amplitude uh, plot of our AI well logs. So in this data you would probably expect to see the well data kind of plotting down here somewhere, um, but because this is a synthetic data set, the data is um, tailing off at these uh, higher frequencies. So I'm just going to edit the um, best fit of the uh, line 
uh, to approximate the frequency content of the well data with a straight line. Uh, so now we've analysed the well data, we can move on to our uh, seismic spectrum. So I just need to pick my um, volume and click recalculate. So this is going to plot, show us our um, seismic spectrum. So we need to design an operator uh, that will convert this seismic spectrum uh, into the well spectrum we saw before, but we should only do this where the seismic uh, data has some frequency. We don't want to boost any um, high or low frequencies. So if we look in this bottom plot down here, Um, so we can start to add in um, some cutoffs to the seismic spectrum to filter out the uh, low and high frequencies, which you can see updating in here. So we're just going to trim to use only this part of the spectrum that has um, some frequency. You can also apply a taper to the cutoff to make the cutoff more gradual uh, and reduce um, ringing in the operator. Um, so if we have a look at the plot in here, we can see that the blue is the um, well spectrum, the red was the, is the seismic spectrum, and the green is the operator uh, that we apply to the seismic spectrum to shape the frequency content of the convolved result to look similar to that of the wells. So we can see the seismic spectrum, uh, or the convolved result, now has um, a shape like this with a slope and a curve that is closer to that of the well plot. So multiplication of this operator will, with the seismic will result in a band-limited impedance volume. So on the right we just need to um, assign a location to write the output to uh, and click apply. We can then move into the second part of this uh, coloured inversion process, actually running the inversion. So this is simply a case to uh, choose your operator and your uh, volume choose an output location um, and click apply. So what I can show you here, um, so on the um, right we have the reflectivity data at a given chi angle uh, which we decided was 42 degrees uh, and on the left is the colour inverted band limited uh, impedance volume. So the next step, uh, you need to pick the top and base reservoir at zero crossings on your relative impedance uh, volume. So this can be a, rel uh, a very um, laborious job, so we've added in a tool to help automate this process. Typically you'd pick these manually, uh, one would pick a chi angle, progress through the workflow to this point, then manually pick the top and base reservoir on the BLI volume. Uh, then if you wish to change the chi angle and rerun the process, you can then use this automated a tool to snap the horizon picks to the peaks and troughs on the new volume. Um, other implementations of this workflow you, you would have to manually pick these surfaces with each iteration consequently you don't end up running many iterations as it's quite labour intensive. So once you've made your initial picks uh, this tool will now allow you to run through many more iterations than was previously possible by quickly automating the repicks. So in the dialog um, it's a case of simply uh, selecting your input surface select the volume you want to um, snap to. Uh, you then have a choice of uh, which zero crossing you want to uh, move to. Do you want to peak a trough uh, or Z or S crossing? You can specify a tolerance and also a snap direction, so up or down, or you can force it up or force it down. Okay, so the next step would be finally, well the Next to last step would be moving on to uh, predicting net, net pay. Um, so the inputs for this are your top and base uh, reservoir picks, your snap to top and base reservoir picks, your band limited or relative impedance volume. And the final thing uh, is an estimate of the frequency content of your band limited impedance volume. So the problem with predicting net pay is that you can't say, okay, between my top and base reservoir is 30 milliseconds, therefore I must have X meters of pay because of tuning. This means uh, that as the peaks and troughs from your top and base reservoir get close to each other, they start to interfere. So if you don't account for tuning, you would overestimate the net pay by a long way. Um, as such, we need to build a model uh, tuning wedge. 
So the impedance used to build the wedge needs to be band limited, or so a wavelet filter must be specified. There are also options to create um, a Ricoh wavelet, specify a wavelet, or to specify um, a zero phase Butterworth filter. Uh, so we've just quickly built um, a tuning wedge using a 25 hertz Ricoh wavelet. You can see here that our tuning wedge, uh, so we've got the um, thin black lines are the uh, true thickness. Uh, which you can see is thinning out to the left uh, and the apparent thickness, the red lines uh, which are picked automatically from the, the zero crossings are represented the apparent thickness that you would see in the seismic data so if we zoom in uh, to the left so from your apparent thickness you would, you would think you have maybe um, 20 milliseconds uh, of thickness as seen in the seismic but in reality you only have um, say 6 or 7 milliseconds so the plot underneath, we can see um, the relationship between the um, apparent thickness and the average BLI between the top and base reservoir picks. So what this tool is going to do is essentially back out um, this relationship. Um, so as this is a model tuning wedge, uh, it's picking an arbitrary value for impedance inside and outside the wedge. Uh, this needs calibrating uh, and is generally done manually. So if I come into these calibration tabs, uh, so from the tuning wedge we can find a scalar such that from a given apparent thickness and average BLI between the surfaces, we can calculate the true net pay. Uh, calibration can be done both on the seismic and the well data, uh, but we'll start with our seismic. So for this process I need my uh, BLI volume and my top and base uh, zero picked surfaces. So we're just going to start with an auto calibration to 100% uh, net to gross. So when the auto calibrate button is pressed, uh, the calibration factor will be set so that the, there's a specified, the specified percentage of points will be below uh, the tuning curve um, in, the, in this plot. So these blue points are actually calculated from the seismic volume. Uh, so for each trace between top and base reservoir, we're measuring the apparent thickness and the average BLI. Each trace gets a dot. Um, the red is your tuning curve. This represents the average BLI at each each corresponding apparent thickness, assuming 100% net to gross. So by correlating the expected band limited impedance to the apparent thickness, the seismic impedance can be detuned and the net pay determined. So in the case of uh, no well data, one thing we can be certain of is that we don't have more than 100% net to gross. So we can see more or less um, all of the points here uh, plot under the top of this curve. So this is making the assumption that the peak net to gross in, uh, in the data is about 100%. However, this is probably not the case in reality. So, for example, you may have some core data that shows you the maximum net to gross uh, is 60%, say. So, you can then come in and adjust your calibration factor. Um, so, now we can see uh, the data is plotted uh, just over halfway to the, the peak of the tuning curve, indicating that the peak net to, net to gross uh, is, is now about 60%, which we're inferring from our core data. So seismic calibration assumes that the maximum net pay in the reservoir is equal to 1. In reality, the true net pay is rarely this high. So the calibration factor may need to be further adjusted. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have some wells in the area, you can uh, uh, so you can take the actual net pay from the wells uh, and use that uh, in the calibration process. So we need to just choose our well data, which you select here. You can choose to use um, well markers uh, and a well log with a specific cutoff. For, for example, gamma ray with a cutoff less than 65 API. Um, however, this is a synthetic data set, data set so we don't have uh, this data available. Um, instead, we're going to input a value, a net pay value in percentage, as perhaps provided by the petrophysicist, petrophysicist for, uh, at each well. Uh, so these values have been provided in uh, milliseconds. Um, to investigate uncertainty in well location, uh, there's an option to specify uh, a number of uh, neighbouring traces. So allowing traces around the well path and top reservoir zero crossing intersections to be considered. Uh, specifying one neighbour will result in eight extra traces, two neighbours 24 traces. So if I click to update again. So hopefully we'd... Um, uh, We'd be looking to hopefully see um, all of the points here 
uh, plotted on this um, straight line, which is saying your predicted net pay um, is the same as your uh, measured net pay. So you can then start to play around with the calibration factor, um, trying to get these points uh, onto this line, keeping an eye on your seismic net to gross. So once the calibration has is, is been correct, corrected, uh, the tool can be run, uh, and a net pay map in time produced. Additional um, QC maps uh, of the average BLI between zero crossings, the seismic net pay thickness and seismic net to gross can be created in milliseconds. Uh, to convert these to time, uh, so uh, create a net pay map uh, in depth, it can be created by using a single velocity to convert um, from time. So I'm just going to jump to some output maps. Okay, so here we can see four of the um, six output maps. We can see the seismic thickness, so this is the apparent thickness measured between top and base uh, zero crossings. We can see the average amplitude measured between uh, top and base zero crossing surfaces. We can see the seismic net to gross, so this is the net pay uh, divided by the apparent thickness. And importantly, uh, the net pay thickness, so this is the average band limited impedance multiplied by the scalar multiplied by the apparent thickness. So just to recap on the workflow, um, we found the um, intercept uh, and gradient volumes, or calculated them rather. Uh, we found the optimum chi angle for differentiating fascias from your wall log data. We then apply that chi angle to your uh, seismic reflectivity volumes. Uh, then use the EEI reflectivity volume uh, as an input to colored inversion. The colored inversion gave us a band limited impedance volume. Uh, we then uh, picked or snapped the top and base surfaces of the reservoir to the zero crossings and then fed those into the um, seismic net pay. So it's a very quick um, and easy workflow to, to work. Th you can work through this in an afternoon. Uh, in the workflow, there are only a few parameters um, that you can play around with. So those are, if you remember, the chi angle, um, the best fit line on your well spectra, the cutoffs and tapers in the colored inversion, the frequency used to build your tuning wedge, and the calibration factor in the net pay. So because this process has been brought together in one location and workflow enabled, you can define all of the variables I just listed um, in a workflow and run the whole process in loops, uh, altering those variables to understand the effects of these variables on your net pay. So this is a workflow um, where we can have the we have the variables I was just talking about described, so the um, intercept and gradient of the best fit line, the filters and tapers for the inversion, and the calibration factor. So this is now going to run through uh, a loop on chi angle, so runs from 0 to 180 degrees and looping every 10. Um, and then generate an intercept uh, gradient volume, uh, color invert that, run the zero, uh, surface snapping, and calculate net pay for each chi angle, so 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 180 degrees, and calculate the volumes uh, associated with each chi angle. So it'll take about an hour to run this process, uh, and it will give you volumes for each of the different chi angles uh, with a single run of a, of a workflow. Um, the results are discussed in the white paper I, I showed earlier. Uh, as I previously mentioned again, or I mentioned again, this project with these workflows and the white paper uh, are available for you to have a look at. So please um, contact us. So basically, this not only allows you to record and repeat, repeat your workflows. It in turn allows you to run sensitiv sensitivities uh, around all of the variables in the workflow. So I think you'll agree, um, a very nice way to run your NetPay workflow in one application uh, and understand uh, understand the uncertainty around all the variables uh, in the workflow and see what possible range of NetPay values are possible. So finally in this demo I'd like to sh quickly show you some of the other associated tools in the toolbox. So we have um, petrophysical reflectivities. So this is going to allow you to um, 
uh, take angle stack data, you so see you're just adding your stacks to here, uh, and then you can transform those into uh, reflectivity volumes, which when inverted can in turn produce other petrophysical properties. It's just a case of adding your stacks, choosing which method you want to, what you want to calculate, and output. We also have a connected volume tool. Uh, so this tool takes volumes of seismic data uh, and a series of cutoffs uh, to find connected bodies within a volume. Um, so for example, if you have a porosity volume, you can use a cutoff filter of 5% to find the location and size of all some bodies in a volume. And lastly, we have uh, seismic AVO classification. So this is the well-known uh, AVO classification. Um, so basically you just need to uh, select your intercept and gradient volumes and um, update on the plot. So on an intercept gradient plot, uh, most seismic data plots in an elliptical cloud uh, around the origin. So by using this um, slider and uh, factors here, you can control the um, the idea is to sort of mute out this background trend. Uh, and AVO anomalies can then be highlighted according to these uh, classes. Um, so whatever data falls within this um, ellipse will be made transparent in the output volume and the remaining data coloured um, as per AVO class. Okay, so that concludes the demo. Um, I'm going to just jump back into PowerPoint. So just to summarise, um, the Blueback SRC provides you with all of the necessary components uh, for the NetPay workflow for thin reservoirs. It's available within the familiar familiarity of the patrol interface and allows for easy integration with all of your uh, existing patrol data. All of the SMP tools are workflow enabled, uh, meaning that the required workflow can be, can be built once and repeated several times, not only saving time but ensuring repeatability results. What is more using simple programming stru structures such as loops, many iterations of the workflow can be executed with a single click of a button, so for example finding total net pay from a range of chi angles. Coloured inversion, in addition to being part of the net pay workflow, can be run on its own. Um, it's fast, transparent and is widely used as a fast approximation, a first approximation when inverting data. AVO seismic classification and petrophysical reflectivities and connected volumes uh, are also all available in Toolbox. So just a quick note on licensing, um, the product is available now on the Ocean Store, ocean.slb.com. You can take a free 14-day evaluation. Uh, the cost of a license uh, is 14,000 US for one year, 26,000 for two. We do offer different pricing models and structures based on how many licenses you may wish to take. So please contact us uh, for further information on these models at sales at blueback-reservoir.com. Again, as I mentioned, we can make the synthetic data set have, have been used in the demo, which comes with the workflows configured for you to investigate the uncertainties we've talked about. Uh, there's also um, the white paper available to uh, talk you through these uncertainties. Just a quick note, um, please come and meet us at, um, we're going to be at EAGE in Copenhagen, the SEG in Las Vegas, Petex in London, and also uh, Adipec in Abu Dhabi this year. So come and meet the team, come and have a chat with us about your ocean development requirements or indeed just to find out more about uh, what Blueback Reservoir has to offer. So a few Q&A. Um, yes, we have um, support for Patrol 2010 and 11 at the moment uh, and we will of course provide support for Patrol 2010 when it's um, available. Uh, yeah, we're, we're planning a um, EEI target log panel. So basically, you'll be able to use the um, the chi angle slider uh, and generate EEI logs interactively to try to match a target well log. Um, so phi um, or gamma ray, for example. Okay, um, I think that's it for today. So um, thank you very much to you all for your participation, um, and thank you and goodbye.